Oh and my we can God. Talk get about the hell out of here. We can talk about Rogers going out of here. Okay. Well, what is the need to bring up the Yankees? It's just, I don't, it's just, it's just stuff to bring up. Cause, you know. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. This came out of nowhere. Oh Clemson is a top team. Don't start with that. Clemson's a top team, no doubt. A hundred percent. Let's see it on Saturday. Then, then they might move down. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are here with episode number 61. As always, it's going to be a great one. We are going to have some NBA talk. We're going to talk about some best teams, surprising teams, and disappointing teams in each respective conference as the season opens up next Tuesday. But as we always do, we're going to start off with our go to the number segment. Number 61, we're starting to get into that mid-range where there's no clear-cut best player available for the number. So I'm going to swing it to Mike first. Your number 61. I want to hear who it is. Uh, I'm going to go with Bill George. Uh, he was a, a linebacker, uh, offensive lineman hybrid for the Chicago Bears. Um, it, so far, this is kind of like the murky range of like athletes who, uh, you know, had been great a long, long time ago. But this guy was fantastic nonetheless. He is eight-time Pro Bowler, uh, eight-time All-Pro, one-time NFL champ. And he is a part of the Hall of Fame 1950s team, um, along with the Hall of Fame, of course. Uh, 18 interceptions as a linebacker that, that's pretty solid especially back then where they really didn't throw the ball as much he was just a really really solid player overall overall and you could see that in his accolades yeah Tommy I'm gonna swing it to you man yeah I'm gonna go with Josh Beckett today you know the last five ones I out of those I picked three football players so I got to get back on track with the baseball players but you know he put together a really good career uh, with the Red Sox, Marlins, and Dodgers. Uh, he spent the majority of his career with the Boston Red Sox, but he did win a World Series with the Florida Marlins. He's a three-time All-Star, a 3.88 career ERA, which, you know, it's not great, but it's still pretty respectable. Um, I mentioned the two World Series in one of those World Series. He was the the MVP of the World Series. Um, and, you know, he had 138 career wins a 35.7 career war. So, you know, he put together a really good career and uh, I have to go with him today. And Matt, let's hear your pick. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Mike. This was a really tough one, but I, th- I just think Bill George has, um, is probably the best answer here. Like I said, 61 was really tough. I didn't know who to go with, but, uh, you know, like Mike said, Bill's uh, stats and accolades were just really good. So I'm going to go with Bill. And we have to agree with Mike and Matt with Bill George here. I mean, you guys mentioned most of the stats. The one thing that I did find is that his eight Pro Bowls and his eight All Pros all came in consecutive seasons right in the middle of his career. So obviously when you can play at such a high level for so many years in a row, that's something that is worth no and to be impressed about. So obviously Bill George is a good answer here. Josh Beck is a good answer here. Really, I didn't find any other names out there for number 61. I think we got we got the two big ones here today. And that's perfect. I think we're going to go right into the NBA. Of course, you guys know NBA is coming up. We uh, have a pretty fun episode, in my opinion, coming up. So we'll just go right into it. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back. Like I said, we got a great NBA topic today. We know the season starts next Tuesday. So we have three different places to pick a team. We have the best team, most surprising, and most disappointing. We're going to start with the best. Um, we'll start with the East. Might as well. Connor, I'll ask you, who do you, what team do you think is going to be the best in the East, Eastern Conference? So I think it's going to be a team that really is going to look revamped out on the court. They have a new head coach. Um, they have a player who's coming off an injury, another player who's coming off an injury. I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets here. I think that they are – they could fit in the most surprising category as well, but I truly think they're going to be the best team in the East. Um a lot of people may be saying the, the Bucks here or whatever, maybe the Raptors, but actually, I mean, we'll get into that a little bit later. But I just think that the Brooklyn Nets have the highest ceiling with these teams, having Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on the floor. Obviously, maybe the chemistry doesn't work out. We'll be, we'll be seeing that firsthand Tuesday night as they play against the Warriors on opening night. But I, I truly believe that at the end of the season, it's going to be the Brooklyn Nets towards the top of the Eastern Conference. Tommy, are you going to agree with him with the Nets? We know you're a, a, a Nets, casual Nets fan. Um, so who do you have for yeah. the best? Yeah, I'm not going to go with them for the best. I am going to go 
with the Milwaukee Bucks. I know that's kind of the obvious pick, but I still think that they have a really strong team there with Giannis, obviously. I think, you know, you saw him sign the extension the other day. I think they have the best player, well, one of the best players um, on the planet. So I certainly think that, um, you know, they they are the best team. Um, you know, they have a good all-around team, but you know, I think Brooklyn's a great pick. I'll talk about them a little later, but I have to go with uh, Milwaukee here. Yeah, definitely with uh, Milwaukee and Drew Holiday, too, is very interesting. Um, Mike, I'll throw it to you for the best team in the East. Um, I'm going to agree with Tommy here. I feel like the Bucs are, um, are definitely going to be the best team in the East. I feel like Brooklyn is going to be a really good team. I would probably project them as, as the two seed, but I, I feel like they do have some – flaws on their roster I, I feel like they have like a lot of mouths to feed I don't really know how the new unexperienced coaching staff is going to do you know obviously you believe in them and they definitely have the talent you know uh to be able to compete for a championship but I'm just not sure I'm just not sure yet while the Bucks they revamped their roster they added Drew Holiday uh Bogdanovich would have been a great addition for them but they still have uh pieces to fill in for uh Bogdanovich, like uh, DiVincenzo, they added Bobby Portis and DJ Augustine, who are um, other great pieces off the bench. And I feel like that Giannis is is going to continuously uh, improve his game, like he's done every year. So I'm going with the Bucks here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to side with Connor here with the Nets. I mean, they do have Steve Nash, who we know is a rookie coach, who's going to be doing his first career coaching game on uh, Tuesday, but they'd also have Mike D'Antoni as an assistant there. So worst, worst case scenario, Mike has to teach a little to Steve Nash, kind of like he did when he was coaching as a player. And also like Connor said, they have the highest ceiling just with Kevin Durant and Kyrie there. I caught some of Kevin's plays during preseason. I hope um, he could get through the whole year and have a really competitive year, but I get, there's a lot to uh, there's a lot of, Tox, tox, whatever. There's a lot of toxics. Uh, Toxicity. Yeah, if that's even a word. <laughs> but uh, is that a word? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of that, you know, with Kyrie. So who knows what's going to happen there. But I just think that they have a really good ceiling here. They still have Karis LeVert, Spencer Didwitty, uh Jared Allen. They still have a really good team around them. So I'm going to go with them as my best. I can see the Bucks though, as the best. But I think it's either between them two. I think we all could agree on that. Do we, want um, to head to, do we want to head it to the West or keep going with the East? No, let's, let's, let's finish up with the East first, then we'll go into the West. All right, next we got most surprising. I'll ask you first, Mike. Who do you think is going to be the most surprising team in the East? Um, we talked about this team before uh, in a separate episode, and I'm going to go with the Washington Wizards, and here's why. I really think – that the upgrade from John Wall to Russell Westbrook is really going to improve this team a lot. Last time we saw um, a point guard up to the level or even near the level Russell Westbrook's play was 2016 uh, when John Wall uh, and Bradley Beal led the Washington uh, Wizards to a semi-conference appearance in the East and they lost in seven against the Boston Celtics. I feel like Russell Westbrook will have that impact and more. I feel like this team is only better than what they were then because Bradley Beal has taken uh, two steps up to becoming a superstar player. He averaged 30 points per game last year with great efficiency. They've also added uh, guys like Rui uh, Hachimuria in last year's draft and Denny Avdija in this year's draft. And those are two really nice pieces uh, Rui showed a lot of promise last year. I feel like Denny, he was the MVP of the pro league he played in in Israel last year. So I feel like that's another great piece just to add to their team. They're a young team. They have a ton of spacing, so that's not going to be an issue for Russell Westbrook in the starting lineup. So he's going to have plenty of room to do what he does best, drive and finish or drive and kick. And I feel like this, this team could really uh, become, I think, a fourth seed at its highest. I feel like a lot of people are down on this team. Well, I feel like the Wizards are a playoff lock this year. Connor, I'm going to throw it to you. Who is your most surprising team in the East? I'm going to go with the Charlotte Hornets here. I think they're a really young team, and obviously we saw them take LaMelo Ball in uh, this year's draft. I think when you pair LaMelo Ball with someone like Devontae Graham, who averaged 18.2 points per game last year, along with 
seven and a half assists. And then you also have PJ Washington in your front court as a, a small forward who played pretty decent last year for, I think, was he a rookie last year? I think PJ Washington was a rookie or maybe in his second year last year. But then you have Gordon Hayward, who was a key addition. And when he's healthy, he can be a, he's like that coach type player who's on the court and can also play at a high level. Then you have Bismack Biombo, who's your, who's your big center, who, I mean, can play incredibly well. We saw him with the, uh, the Raptors a couple of years ago, where he has a big presence in the paint during the regular season and during the postseason. So I think the Hornets, they have a good young squad here where they're going to exceed a lot of expectations. I mean, we saw they had the number four overall pick in this year's draft. I don't think they're going to be anywhere close. Well, it was three. They drafted Lamelo third. Okay, I thought they were four. But anyway, I, I think they're going to exceed a lot of that. I don't think they're going to be picking anywhere near the third pick in next year's draft. But another team that I do kind of have in there is the uh, returning Eastern Com- Eastern Conference champions in the Heat because a lot of people do believe that they might just be a bubble team and that a lot of it was just the chemistry that they grew through the bubble. But I truly believe even with the uh, – I'm not going to pronounce the guy's name that they got in the draft because it's – not pronounceable for me, but I mean, you have Duncan Robinson who has another year of experience, Tyler Hero who has another year of experience, Jimmy Butler, and all these players. Like they just they're gonna get mend well again. And then you have Bam Adebayo who just signed a massive contract. I think they could play up to their potential again. Yeah, I mean, um, not to get off task or anything. You do you think Lamelo Ball is gonna win the Rookie of the Year since you picked the Hornets? I think it's gonna be tough for him not to. I mean, just watching some of his preseason highlights and the way he can pass the ball, he's so flashy with the ball in his hands and he's just so versatile and agile. I think he can move his way up and down the court so easily and he can shoot with ease. I mean, we already saw he nailed the three-pointer and then turned and looked at the bench and kind of somewhat mocked him. So, I mean, he's already got that kind of little flashy like attitude that you need to succeed in the NBA. And I think that he's truly going to succeed. Um, Just before we move on, what are your expectations for – uh, the Hornets. I'm. I'm just curious. Like, do you expect them to, like, be on the verge of making the playoffs, or do you fully expect them to make the playoffs? I can see them towards the middle to the end of the season battling for like a six, seven, or eight seed in the playoffs. I think. I think they could find their way into the postseason when the season ends. All right. Back. Back to the uh, question on hand, Tommy. Who do you think is going to be the most surprising team in the East? Yeah, I have to go with a team. Uh, that you, Matt, and Connor talked about before. I got to go with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, And, you know, I think you made a lot of good points. I certainly think that they can. Um, You know, they do have a chance to compete for that conference title, and I certainly think that they're going to be there at the end. Um, But, you know, some of the points that you brought up as well, just, um, you know, Steve Nash, his first year as a coach, I certainly think, you know, Not that it would hold them back because they have quite a bit of talent on that roster, but, you know, he's not the most experienced and he'll learn things. And I think he will do a good job. Um, But you mentioned it's the first time that Kevin Durant and Kyrie are going to be playing um, there in Brooklyn. So I think that there may be a little bit of a learning curve to that. You know, they're all learning the system, getting used to each other. Um, But I think that they're going to be a really good team. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily, I have them as the most surprising. I wouldn't be surprised, um, you know, if they went deep into the postseason. It's just that, you know, we think about where this team was a few years ago and to where they are today. Um, it's quite a jump. So to see them with a chance to compete for a title, I think would be, you know, I think it's certainly possible, but it would be quite a jump. So we'll see. But I think they're in a great spot, and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing what they can do this year. The most surprising team in the East I'm going to take is the Atlanta Hawks. Um, I think they have a lot of potential this year, especially offensively with Trey Young um, getting uh, Gallinari, Bogdanovich, and then having uh, Herder come off his third year, second year. He He's a really good shooter. And then, um, yeah, something like that. Clint Capella, John Collins obviously coming back, and then they drafted – um, another name I can't pronounce is o- Okongwu from uh, USC. And then obviously they have uh, second year players in DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. I think the potential is all there. I think that could, they could really surprise us. Not making a deep run or anything, just I think sliding into the playoffs with the eight, seventh, um, sixth seed, kind of like Connor said with the Hornets. So time will tell whether the defense is going to live up uh, on the other side of the ball. But I, I definitely think with this offensive, offensively, this team has so much potential 
and could take them right to the playoffs. Funny story about the Hawks. Kevin Herter, the uh, the shooter that you mentioned, actually grew up like 15 minutes from me, played high school around here. And he's actually, he talks about it all the time on his Twitter about uh, storage ice cream and how much he misses it down in Atlanta. So it's just a funny story about how he's close to home. Yeah, he should have went to Syracuse. What What the heck? If <laughs> he's so right. close to uh, Syracuse. But um, no, I mean, good story, but we can move on to the most disappointing team in the East. Um, I'll start with uh, I'll start with Connor. You've been talking. So you guys actually mentioned one of my teams for the best. And I'm going to go with the Milwaukee, Bo- Milwaukee Bucks slash Toronto Raptors. Now, for the Bucks, Just for the pick Bucks, one. <laughs> just okay. Pick one. If I'm just going to pick one, then I'll pick the Raptors. But I, I truly believe that's because, I mean, we didn't see a lot of them, that team making a lot of big moves this past offseason. Um, and with teams really loading up, and, and they lost in the conference quarterfinals, semi, semifinals to Boston. And Boston's just going to get younger and better. Miami Heat is just going to keep getting younger and better, where – if, if you want to you want to beat these teams, you got to bulk up your team and get better. And they didn't do anything to get much better. Now, I'm not saying that they're not going to be a playoff team or anything along those lines, but I just don't think they're going to compete to the high level that a lot of people believe they do. Okay, now I'll give you your bucks because, you know, Raptors, I have the Raptors, so I kind of wanted you to go oh, with the Bucks. <laughs> so, I, I mean, with the Bucks, I mean, Mike mentioned some of their, uh, their key accusations, but – I am a, tr- a firm believer in the fact that they're not going to win a championship until you get another star in there with, with Giannis Antetokounmpo. And you could call Drew Holiday that star. You could say Chris Middleton could be that star. But, I mean, we saw it through the last two post um, playoffs. They, they haven't played up to their level of expectations being a number one seed in the East. And, yes, Drew Holiday may be a good addition, or DJ Augustine and Bobby Portis off the bench may be, may be solid players, but – Giannis can't do it himself, and we saw it in the playoffs. He's trying to go out there and shoot threes, and I don't think he hit a single three against the Miami Heat in that series where when he doesn't have those shooters, he, he they're not going to succeed. Again, I'm not saying they're not going to make the playoffs or even be a, a top seed in the East, but when I'm thinking about the best team in the Eastern Conference, I'm thinking about a team that could get into the NBA playoffs, and the Milwaukee Bucks just aren't that team for me. All right, Mike, uh, who is your most disappointing team? Well, it seems like we're all on the same page for disappointing because I actually do have the Toronto Raptors as well. Um, I I feel that people are going to think that the Raptors are going to stay at that highly highly competitive level that they were at last year where they were two seed and only three games uh, behind the Bucs for the first seed. They lost their two uh, big men, Serge Ibaka, who was a fantastic player for them in the playoffs. He was absolutely a huge presence for them in the paint. And same with Marcus Saul. Those are all guys who could defend the rim really well and um, shoot the ball uh, from deep. And both of them went to their respective LA teams and they got Aaron Baines and Alex Len to replace them. I like Aaron Baines as a player, but he's nowhere near the caliber of either Marcus Saul or Serge Ibaka. I feel like this team is going to be super underwhelming. I I don't find any way Pascal Siakam gets better from from here. I, I just I just don't see the tools in his toolbox for him to become either a better shooter. He needs to put more moves in, in his arsenal, but besides a spin move, I get it's like a meme or whatever that Pascal Siakam only spins, but that's literally the only thing he does. He needs to put something else in his arsenal, and I I feel like. The Raptors, they're still going to be a very competitive team just because with Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet and Nick Nurse being one of the best coaches in the league and just the organization is well run as a whole. But they are not going to be a top four seed in the East this year. No shot. Matt, why don't you give us give us yours so that Tommy can finish out with a different team maybe? Uh, well, mine's the Raptors. I already said that. But uh, <laughs> pretty much what you guys said, they lost Marcus Souls or Jabaka. They didn't really make any moves in the offseason. I just don't think they're going to – I mean, CBS Sports, which, you know, I, I'm not saying they're the best, but they have them ranked at eight, which I think for power rankings, which I think is way too high. I just think they're going to be a disappointment. Just maybe still make the East, of course, but not be one of those top teams like Mike said. And, Tommy, you can finish this off with uh, the East. Yeah, I'm going to go with another team. It's one that I think, Connor, you had – um, for your most surprising, I'm going to go with the Washington Wizards. I 
you know, I think that they certainly could surprise some teams, but at the same time, I think that their um, their expectations might be a little high uh, with the acquisition of Russell Westbrook. I think that, you know, that that could potentially give them some pressure that other teams don't have, you know, um, because obviously we know what Russell Westbrook can bring to a team, but um, I think they still have a really good all around team, but I don't know. I, I don't think they're going to be quite as good as some people are expecting, but at the same time, I, I think they could have a pretty good season. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was Mike who had it. Yeah. I, I said, I said the Wizards were, um, going to be the most surprising team. And again, I'm not saying that they're going to win a championship or anything. I'm just saying that they're a lock for the playoffs and that they could potentially win a series. Great picks by all you guys. We'll move into the West. The best team. I don't know. How, I feel like this could be unanimous. I'm not sure though. I'll start first, you know, since I could finally get to go first, I'm gonna go with the Lakers. I think that they're, I honestly think they're going to two Pete. Um, I just don't really see any flaws. I mean, they got Dennis Schroeder. They finally got a point guard to play. I mean, like LeBron was like listed as point guard like what a year ago or something. They finally got a point guard, which is a good thing. And then they got Montrez Harrell there too. So I think it's gonna be the Lakers. Didn't they get Marcus Soul too? Yep. Yeah. Connor. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty clear cut. I think it should unanimously be Lakers across the board. I just think. I mean, they won a championship and still found a way to go out and get better in the offseason. I don't see any way they don't find themselves back in the finals unless potentially a, a big injury to one of their key players, which none of us want to hope for. So I think it's got to be the Lakers here. Tommy? Yeah, I have to go with the Lakers. I agree with you. You mentioned the title. They, they were the best team last year, and I think that's going to continue for sure. I think, you know, with LeBron, Anthony Davis – they have a great team around them there. So I certainly think that they're going to be the best team in that conference again. And Mike. Yeah, it, it's the Lakers here. There's really no doubt in my mind. They, they've they added so many pieces in the offseason. Like you mentioned, Montrez Harrell, Dennis Schroeder, uh, Marcus Saul, and, and apparently this guy, Taylor Horton Tucker, he's been lighting up the preseason. He, I mean, he, he, he dropped 30 points in the Clippers the other night. And he's just absolutely been absolutely lightening up. And I feel like, I mean, I, it could be like a Yankees situation from like this year where, where we all expected them to win a championship, but you know, whatever goes wrong, but it, it's kind of hard to say that now that I, I really don't see any shot that the Lakers are not the best team in the West. I mean, you mentioned the Yankees and Tommy's face yeah. lit up, man. Tommy, what you know, do you do about that? <laughs> we haven't talked about the Yankees in so long, but no, I mean, I think you make a good point there. But yeah, hopefully we'll have some Yankee news to talk about soon with DJ LeMahieu. But yeah, he, apparently they're pretty far apart, Tommy. It's not good news. Don't you this worry, is Mike. Talk. This is a baseball <laughs> talk. Let's bring it back, back to the NBA. We're going to go with our most surprising team now. I'm going to let Matt go first because he's been doing some moderating here. So, Matt, why don't you give us your most surprising team? I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks. I I am a big Luka Doncic fan. I think I think we've all figured this out so far. <laughs> I think he's, he's, he's primed to have an MVP season. Do I think he's going to win? Maybe, maybe not. But I think he's going to be a front runner at least for it. Um, he looked absolutely great in the bubble. He was kind of electric, um, especially in the Clippers series uh, with the buzzer beater. But, you know, Chris Stops is he's expected to miss some time, but I still think the offense is going to uh, pick it up. They got Josh Richardson, which I'm not saying the, the man's great. I mean, you know, he was over in Philly uh, for like nothing. Um, but still, it's it's a good it's a good addition. Um, and I think the Mavericks can really be on the top of the West alongside the Lakers and uh, such. Ugh, sorry, I was yawning there. It's been a long... What, long what am I, I'm boring you, Connor? I've been talking <laughs> for like 30 seconds. Long Friday afternoon. Mike, why don't you give us your most surprising team? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to go with the Phoenix Suns um, because I'm a big believer in the addition of Chris Paul. I mentioned that uh, when we reviewed that trade and I mentioned how well they played in the bubble and all that stuff. I really think that they could uh, climb up to the four seed in the West and surprise a lot of people, especially with uh, DeAndre Aiden taking a step up. But I'm not going to pick them for my most surprising team in the West because I, I feel like that's 
a popular option, right? But the team that I'm going to go with is the Denver Nuggets. And yes, you, you, you might be saying, oh, yeah, they made the Western Conference Finals last year. I feel like a lot of people are, are thinking that it's a fluke. And I, I really don't think so. Not necessarily because that, you know, Jamal Murray is like a superstar or because I think Jokic is like a top five player in the league. I think both those players are really fantastic. But I'm talking about the pieces around them I think are really going to step up. I think Michael Porter Jr. is going to come out improve himself immensely and i think he's going to win the most uh improved player of the year i think bobo has a real shot at winning um rookie of the year if they can roll out a lineup of michael porter jr nikola Jokic, bobo and whatever combination of guards you want that is just so much length all over the floor and i feel like uh mike malone is going to find a way to, to put all these pieces together and they're going to improve immensely. And I honestly think they have a shot of taking down the Lakers. Man, Bol Bol, what a name. <laughs> Tommy, why don't you give us your most surprising pick here? See, this is tough. I was going back and forth between a couple of teams. I think I'm going to go with the Golden State Warriors. I know that they had the devastating injury uh, with Clay Thompson, which, you know, that's very difficult. And, you know, with a player like that, it's tough to – to, you know, they're not going to be quite what they were hoping um, entering this season, but I still think that they have some really good talent. Obviously, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. Um, and they signed Jeremy Lin uh, the other day, which was interesting as well. But um, I think they might surprise some people um, and make the postseason, but we'll see. I mean, like I said, with the injury to Clay Thompson, that certainly does hurt their chances. But um, I think they have enough talent to – uh, you know, get into the playoffs, maybe a seven or eight seed. As for my surprising team, first off, Tommy, I think the Golden State Warriors could be a little bit higher in the Western Conference playoffs than seven or eight seed. That's just a little disclaimer there. But as far as my uh, surprise team in the West, I'm going to go with another team similar to the Hornets in the East. I'm going to go with the Sacramento Kings here. I think um, they're another great young team. I think Marvin Bagley is really going to have a breakout year. He averaged uh, 14 points a game last year. De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, both had great years last year. Um, Rashawn Holmes has looked pretty good in the preseason. And Hassan Whiteside being there, who's another big force in the uh, the middle of your uh, front court, I think that could be another key piece. And we saw them pretty close to a Western Conference eight um, eight spot last year. I were they in the bubble? I can't the remember. The Kings? Kings were in the bubble. Yeah, not. they were. They were. I think they were. I I think we could find them again close to an seven or eight spot in the Western Conference, which is I I think they're going to surprise a lot of people with their youth and how well they're going to be able to play. Um, I think I think the issue with uh, the Kings is, and I'm going to mention this, in my disappointing teams, they're not my they're not going to be my most disappointing team. I just think that the West is just so loaded this year. Every Almost every single team got better, and I feel like the Kings really didn't make any moves. They lost Bogdanovich, and I understand that Bagley wasn't necessarily healthy the whole year last year. But I, it's it's hard for me to foresee him taking that step forward. But you, you think he will, and I really don't think the Kings are going to have a shot at the playoffs because of the Timberwolves got better, Steph Curry's back, the – Trailblazers got better. The Mavericks got better. The Jazz are still really good. I just don't see a path for them to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, Mike, oh, you're, you're uh, your most. Oh, Matt, why don't you go ahead? Kyle Guy, he hit the buzzer beater over uh, the Kyle Warriors. Guy, that's right. That? <laughs> Mike, why don't you give us your most disappointing team? You started to allude to it. Yeah. So for uh, my most disappointing team, it's going to be the Memphis Gri Grizzlies. And the reason for this being, I feel like a lot of people are going to think that, oh, since they were so close to the playoffs last year, they definitely are going to be able to slide in and with John Morant getting better and stuff like that. But I really don't find it a path for them to the playoffs, similar to the Kings. They did not add anything this offseason. I'm pretty sure uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. is out for a small portion at, at the beginning of the season. And especially for – those fringe teams nearing the eighth seed in the playing tournament, um, every single game is important. So I feel like that uh, Jaron Jackson absence is really going to hurt them. And you see teams like the Timberwolves adding Anthony Edwards, and they're going to have D'Angelo Russell for a full season. 
you see the Pelicans having Zion Williamson for a full season, adding Steven Adams. And you see the Suns adding Chris Paul. And all those teams were out of the playoffs last year. And then, the, of course, the Golden State Warriors bring back Steph Curry. And those are four teams that missed the playoffs last year who I think are all better than the Memphis Grizzlies this year. So I think the Grizzlies are going to be a bottom three team in the West. And I, there's no way I can see them making the playoffs. So in that sense, I think they'll be disappointing. I love John Moran, but they, they just aren't uh, a good enough team to make the playoffs. Matt, who's your most disappointing team in the Western Conference? I'm going to go with the Clippers. I mean, they're ranked fourth on CBS Sports's uh, power rankings that I'm looking at here. I get they have Tyron Lue as a coach, but think about Tyron Lue without LeBron James. He's 1-18 in for the tenure that he had in Cleveland. And I'm not saying they don't have a caliber player of LeBron James because obviously they have Kawhi there. Um, not even going to mention Paul George. The dude just didn't look good in the bubble. But um, they, they struggled with chemistry problems late in the season. I just I, – I don't think they're going to be one of the top-tier teams. They're going to make the playoffs. I'm not saying they're not. I just don't think they're going to be a top-three team like everyone's saying. They're, everyone thinks they're going to be. I mean, Kawhi can ball out. Um, he could go for an MVP season. I could be wrong. I just don't think the Clippers are, should be high in the power rankings. Tommy, what's your pick here? Yeah, I think that was a great pick. I'm going to agree with you, Matt. I got to go with the Clippers – um, we all know that they disappointed um, last season in the bubble. Many expected them to even go to the finals. So, um, you know, they haven't been able to prove it. Um, so I, I'm going to go with the Clippers here for being disappointing. But at the same time, I mean, they got Kawhi. They have, uh, they have a lot of talent on that team. Uh, they have Lou Williams off the bench as well, right? So, I, you know, I certainly think that it's a, it's a good team, but I don't think that they're going to live up to expectation. Well, and to wrap up this, this fun segment, I'm going to give my most disappointing team in the Houston Rockets. Now, here's the thing is I think there's just, Matt mentioned how much chemistry that there may be in the LA Clippers um, situation. I don't think there's going to be any chemistry in Houston because you have a rookie head coach in Steven Silas and there's all of this stuff coming out about James Harden right now and how on off days he would go out and party in a different state and management would know about it and they wouldn't care because they would know that he'd be back the next day and put up a triple double with 30 points and and when this type of news comes out like you have players turning on your management and players turning on coaches and like why does he get this special treatment and he doesn't and now he's still asking to be traded where I don't know if a trade is necessarily going to going to go through and he might just have to suck it up and play for the Houston Rockets. And if so, I don't think there's going to be any chemistry there on the court between all the players. And I think he's going to try to overrule Steven Silas on a lot of his calls. And I just think it's not, not saying that they're a bad team or even James Harden is going to have a bad year of playing, but I just don't think the chemistry is there for them to, to produce a lot of uh, the way a lot of people may be thinking. Final finals, early predictions for the finals. Let's all go through this. Connor, who do you have? This is tough. Um, I'm probably going to have to take my two best teams in the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers. Who wins? Oh, the Lakers win. Yeah, I'm up to. I'm doing the same thing as you, Lakers over Nets. Tommy. Um, I think I'm going to go with the same thing, just because I would love to see the Brooklyn Nets there in the finals. Um, and I think that the Lakers, they're the best team in the West. I mean, they, there's a lot of great teams in that conference, but I think that they're going to be there again this year. And I would love to see Brooklyn. And Mike? Um, I'm going to take the Lakers over the Bucks. I think this is the Bucks here where they finally get through to the finals. I think the addition of Drew Holiday, that's the third star that they finally needed to take some pressure off the honest, like you were alluding that the Bucks needed, Connor. And uh, – but once again, I honestly think Denver has a shot at knocking off the Lakers. I'm not going to be surprised in any sort of imagination if if Michael Porter Jr. emerges as a star and the Nuggets knock off the Lakers. I'll just leave it at that. All right. Well, we heard it there. Those are NBA predictions for this year. Goat picks are, wrapped, are ramping up. We have just about two weeks left, and it's a close battle there. We have four more games, including the two NBA opening night games coming up for go picks that's going to come up next
<laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with the Go Picks to finish off this great episode. We got four great games, two NFL, two NBA. We we'll start with the NFL games on Sunday. Bears, Vikings, NFC North division rivals. The Vikings have a 58% chance to win. I know Connor loves his uh, probabilities with a 2.5 spread over the Bears. Um, Mike, who are you going to go with? Oh, dude, this is so tough. This is a really close matchup. But I'm going to go with the Bears here. And I, I just think the Vikings have been – the games they've won have been extremely close against bad teams like the Jaguars and the Panthers, and they have not uh, impressed me. A- and plus, um, I just find it hard for the Vikings to sweep the season series against the Bears. I'm going to take the Vikings. Um, I think, uh, obviously, they would. I think they would have beat the Bucks if their kicker actually made every field goal and extra point last weekend. So I don't think they had a really bad weekend. And I just think that the Vikings need to start winning. And I'm more confident in the Vikings than the Bears, just because the Bears had such a rocky season with their quarterback problem, even though even though he looked fairly good against the Texans. Um, Sean Brown. Well, I'm going to go with the Vikings as well. And after Florida wins on Saturday night against Alabama, I'm right back in this thing here. <laughs> uh, no, the Vikings, I think the Vikings can handle this fairly easily i mean we saw a good mitchell trubisky last week i don't know if we're gonna see that again could i don't think it's gonna happen he's playing again right Foles is still out yeah yeah i don't don't think we're gonna see that again um i think it's gonna be a justin jefferson day for the minnesota vikings offense and finally tommy i have to agree with you um the vikings i think they will win this game they've won five of their last seven after they started one and five so i have to go with them i think I think they're going to win by a decent bit. I think it's going to be the Vikings easily. You guys oh, are man. I, I really hope. The, I mean, the Bears, we'll, we'll, we don't have to get into it. Um, The next game, Chiefs-Vikings. Chiefs have a 65% chance to win with a line of four. Connor, I love you. I, I know you love the predictions. I'm just going to keep doing this. Um, So, Mike, they're playing against the Saints. Who are you going to go with? <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna go with the chiefs here um the chiefs are just the best team in the nfl I'll, I'll leave it at that and plus michael thomas just got ruled out for the game against the chiefs yeah uh, i'm going with the chiefs that's the best offense that's the best team in the nfl don't think anyone's gonna stop them anytime soon connor you know i was gonna go with this game picking the opposite team of whatever you guys picked i just can't pick against the chiefs here though so i'm gonna go with the chiefs tommy yeah, I have to go with Kansas City here. But Drew Brees, he is back on Sunday, right, for the Saints. So I think that'll help them out. And they're, you know, obviously they're a really talented team, 10 and 3 on the season. But you said it, Mike, they're the best team in football there in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes and the entire squad around him. So I have to go with Kansas City on uh, Sunday. Moving into the NBA opening day is on Tuesday. We got two really good games. The Warriors and the Nets, we've mentioned them earlier in this uh, episode. Mike, who do you think is going to win that game? I'm going to go with the Nets here. Um, I just don't think – I think Stephen Curry is great, but I just don't think the team around him is going to be enough to defeat uh, KD, Kyrie, and that squad. I'm going to take the Nets too. Uh, let's hope for a Steve Nash win. Connor. I'm going to go with the Warriors. I think the Warriors have a good shot of winning this game. Um, as far as the Nets, I did say they were going to be my best team in the East. I think it could be a little bit of a 2011 Miami Heat best team in the East, where they start off relatively slow as a super squad, where they try to build up that uh, that chemistry, and then they wind up exploding into the NBA Finals. So I think I think the Warriors are going to win this first game of the season. And Tommy? I have to agree uh, with, with Matt and Mike on this one. I think that the Brooklyn Nets, my team, they're going to win this. They're going to start out 1-0. Uh, KD and Kyrie are going to play great and get the squad a win on opening night. Maybe Tommy can finally have a winning team. I mean, it must be miserable watching the Yankees every year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're a winning team. Don't even give me go. But, no, I, I'm looking forward to this season, though. I think that's going to be exciting for Brooklyn fans, and hopefully they can give, you know, New York something to be excited about because the, you know, the other team's not going to do it. Thank you, have failed. You don't have to tell us that twice, Tommy. Next game we got is the Lakers and the Clippers. Um, very good matchup. 
obviously, Mike, we know uh, your thoughts about the Clippers. <laughs> Please pick them. Oh, I, oh, this is so tough for me. Pick them. Why? Might as well. I'll pick them. I'll go with the Clippers. Not because I, I think that the Clippers are going to win the championship this year. I think that LeBron and Anthony Davis just showed up in their first preseason, preseason game. Kawhi and Paul George have played in all three. I think it's going to take um, LeBron and Anthony Davis a couple games to get their legs under them. So that's why I'm taking the Clippers here. Man, it's almost like these guys don't practice at all, but I'm going to take the Lakers. Connor? Yeah, I'm going to take the Lakers as well. Mike's just really opening the door back up for me. I mean, I – Okay, okay, Mr. Floor, floor. We'll see how that works out for you, buddy. A Gators win, and this is huge. This is a huge week. Tommy? Yeah, I have to go with the Lakers here. I just think that, you know, they're a better team overall. We set best team uh, in the league, I think, right now. So they're going to start out 1-0 and, and, you know, pick up where they left off just a couple months ago. Man, we are making it even more exciting here going down the stretch of GOAT picks. Listen, Florida's not going to win. No. No, there's no chance. You guys just wait. You guys wait, man. You know what? Bold prediction right now that probably won't happen, but I'm going to throw it out just because of it. Marco Wilson cost his team the win against LSU. He's going to get a game ceiling pick off Mac Jones on Saturday night to win the game. Okay. You're delusional. Anyways, I think that that wraps up this episode of Go Chat. Another great episode, 61. Um, As always, subscribe if you're not subscribed. We know a lot of you that are watching right now are not subscribed. So if you're still here in the video, please hit that subscribe button. It really supports us and helps us out. Follow us on any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Please follow us there. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one.